So if you bring up MMO anime and not the other way around, there's a difference. People will give you a lot of recommendations. However, the one that most people tend to mention is the most accurate to an MMO is Log Horizon. Now, unlike the other animes I've covered on my channel thus far, I've actually seen all of Log Horizon. But that doesn't mean I can't still make fun of it. And remember, as always, we're gonna get picky, but it's for humor, so suck it up. As the clock strikes midnight, we find our main character Shiro fighting a bunch of weasels. Which in this universe are really only slightly more creepy than our version of weasels. He's accompanied by two other characters. Natsuku, a tank class who's just standing there taking it like a good tank should, and Akatsuki, an assassin DPS that actually dodges away from damage? <laughs> and you guys said this was true to an MMO. If it were really true, she'd have been dead long ago and the tank would be screaming about not getting heals fast enough. This show is a den of lies. Shiro appears to be the group's strategist, planning out attacks and strategies, but they're definitely getting whooped which makes me question his qualifications. The reason our main characters are having so much trouble is that they're not playing the game normally, because this is no longer a game. It's real life. Yeah, Log Horizon is another one of those stuck in the game type shows, but before the show delves too far into it, Shiro is grabbed by a giant Mario piranha plant that somehow managed to sneak up on him. Master strategist my ass. And we cut to the intro. Which I mean, if you've watched Log Horizon, you know. The intro song is like the best part of the show. And that's saying a lot, cause it's a good show. Go listen to it. I'll wait. Okay. After the intro, we cut back to the moment Shiro awoke in the game life, real life, game life thing. You know what I mean. It appears he and several other hundreds of thousands of people have been sucked into the MMO Elder Tale and have taken the form of their characters. So keep in mind they don't look like their real life selves. That'll come up later. Now this game isn't a VR simulation like our friend Sword Art Online over there. So everyone is freaking out because they don't know what's going on. I mean, imagine waking up to a completely different looking world, looking completely different, and wearing different clothes. And it's a lot like that. I mean, I don't see a problem with it. I go through that like every morning after I pass out drunk. Life is weird. The world is just suddenly this MMO, complete with NPCs and players screaming that they want to speak to a GM. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that, buddy. They'll just have you put in a ticket and close it out with no resolution. Might as well just take that complaint and throw it straight in the toilet. Shiro quickly figures things out as he discovers the game's menus. Though, as to be expected, he can't just log out. But he still has all his items and even a friends list. He decides to look up his buddy Nayatsuku, and they meet up under a tree to try and figure some stuff out. It appears this Jumanji ass sh coincided with the game's new expansion release, which probably is not a coinky dink. No one really seems to remember how they got here. So the two set out to gather more information, and we start to learn more about our characters. And by that, I mean we find out Nayatsuku is a pervert who loves panties. Because anime! Nayatsuku has a theory there are two types of people. Open perverts who are proud of it and scream about panties at the top of their lungs, and closeted perverts who just keep their perversion to themselves. I'm not sure why this is the show to discuss this, but it sounds accurate, sure, why not? Anyway, before we can get too far into the panties, the two are interrupted by someone throwing rocks at them, who turns out to be Akatsuki, Shiro's assassin friend from the beginning of the show. And upon meeting her, Nayatsuku says, because anime. Akatsuki has been looking for Shiro in hopes that he can sell her a potion to change her appearance. Because, oh yeah, spoiler alert, given away in the first few minutes of the show, she is a she. And apparently walking around in a male body with a female voice is a bit awkward. Which is true, just as Teenage Hive Leader. So she swigs a potion, causing massive Saw movie level body horror that I'm glad we can't see, ah. And now she's just adorable. Meanwhile, in plot two, two kids go for a walk. Back to plot one. What the hell was that? The three characters spend some time getting to know each other and Akatsuki and Niatsuku are getting along great. The three decide to group up as all of them are lone wolves, AKA they don't have guilds but they think it'd be best to stick together, causing Akatsuki to declare her undying loyalty and protection to Shiro in repayment for the appearance-changing potion. Kinda creepy. But sure, I mean, who doesn't want their own pet ninja? I have one, but he keeps peeing on the carpet. Oh, come on! No! Bad ninja! Bad! One short commercial break later, and the trio have made their way to town. They speak with some people of the land, aka NPCs, and buy some food, which ends up tasting like soggy crackers. This'll come up later, but not in this episode. And before the show dwells on this too much, Shiro gets a call from a character named Mariel, and off they go! 
Mariel leads a large guild called the Crescent Moon Alliance. Mariel is... You know what, let's just call her excitable. And apparently just loves cute stuff, which doesn't bode well for Akatsuki. She's even a bit too much for Neatsuku. That is a lot of crazy. We're also introduced to Henrietta, who doesn't appear to be affected by cute stuff. Oh, nope, never mind. Huh. Cute anime girls work on everyone, apparently, including cute anime girls. I don't understand how life works anymore. Here we're given an information dump. The four other main cities of the game are all in a similar shape to where our characters are located, which is the city of Akabara, and the teleportation gates between these cities are offline, forcing people to walk if they want to get somewhere. Oof, no fast travel in this MMO? What is this, 2005? Ho <laughs> ho, up top! There is no one else in here with me. Turns out, due to everyone, you know, freaking out, Guilds are recruiting in large numbers in hopes of gaining some security through numbers. And these gals are no exception. They attempt to recruit Shiro and his crew to no success. For some reason that isn't explained in this episode, Shiro is against guilds. He used to have a large group of guildless friends called the Debauchery Tea Party, which I can't decide if that's a terrible name or an awesome one. Anyway, they would complete raids and high-level quests together and wait. You don't like guilds, but you used to have a large group of people who would work together and had a cool name for that group of people. That's a f***ing guild! Just because you didn't formalize it doesn't mean it wasn't a guild, you damn hipster. Stop doing that with your glasses. Get some that fit. Our trio then discussed the ramifications of death in this universe, debating whether dying would let you out of the game, make you die in real life, or if you would simply respawn. They decide to test it out, bringing us back to the beginning of the episode. The three are having trouble figuring out how to properly fight, until they finally start to feel the game, allowing them to defeat their enemies. Wait a second. Shiro's ultimate strategy was to feel the game? I question you. Also, weren't you trying to die? You can't even succeed when you're trying to fail! You are a terrible strategist! And that's it for episode one. Frankly, not too shabby. I really enjoyed Log Horizon on my first go around, and the second was no different. It does feel like this show in particular understands how MMOs actually work, which is good considering that's the setting. But looking back and knowing how the rest of the series works out, episode one doesn't really set up much about the world or its rules, but that's okay. It does a great job setting up some fun characters that you'll want to watch. Especially this guy. He's a pervert, and that's okay, because I mean, everyone loves panties. Heck, I'm wearing some right now. Don't judge me.